The patients are often teenagers or barely in their 20s, yet several of them hobble in on walkers to physical therapy. Like about two million women in developing countries, these Ethiopian women suffer from fistulas or ruptures, usually the result of difficult childbirth. They're leaking urine and some of them are leaking bowel contents as well. They have a hole not only in the bladder but in the rectum. Dr. Catherine Hamlin and her late husband came to Ethiopia in the 1960s as missionaries. The young obstetricians quickly specialized and set up the world's only fistula hospital to treat the most desperate of all patients they saw, the fistula patient. She's smelling, she's poor, she's got nothing, and she's an outcast from her whole society, from everything that makes her happy. They lie in bed thinking, if I keep very still, the urine will dry up. They curl up in bed. They become stiff, their knees become contracted, their hips become contracted. They get nerve damage to their feet. The sciatic nerve is pressed on by the long labor and they've got paralysis of their feet. They can't bring the foot up. Fistulas were common across the world until the early 20th century when prenatal care and modern systems of delivering health care, like cesarean sections, became available. Today, fistulas are almost unheard of in richer countries. For me as an Ethiopian, the fact that fistula is happening in the 21st century is not something that we are proud of. When we see, when we compare developing countries like the U.S., where uh, complication for a mother is like one in 4,000 in my country, pregnancy or birth-related related complication is one in 27. Dr. Yetnayat Asfor works for a non-government aid group called Engender Health. She says the big issue is access to care in the vast, impoverished rural areas of this land of 82 million people and myriad cultural practices. 84% lives in the rural population. So the majority are rural women. And for rural women, the issues are many, such as harmful traditional practices, Female genital mutilation is one, early marriage is another. The practice of cutting external female genitalia and other trauma, like rape, are thought to cause about 20% of fistulas. But the vast majority are a complication of obstructed labor, which results both in stillbirths and permanent injury to the young mothers. The pelvis of the woman is too small for the baby to come through, or the baby's in a bad position inside the woman. So my husband used to say it's either the passage or the passenger. <laughs> Vaginal and rectal fistulas can be repaired surgically, and Dr. Hamlin, who's 87, still performs many of the procedures, like this woman's case. So this was done yesterday, and she's... Um, we were asked not to use patient names. Three days of labor, and then she had a stillborn baby, hmm. and uh, then she was left with a vaginal fistula in the bladder. And uh, it was quite... Uh, it was reasonably... Difficult one. So what's the period of convalescence then? I think in about uh, 10 or 12 days. Fistula surgery is not only repairing the torn bladder or the rectum, but it's basically repairing human lives. It's repairing broken hearts. Some patients, long ostracized from society, return to their villages and find new husbands, new lives. Others stay on to work at the Hamlin Fistula Hospital. But the vast majority of Ethiopian women live too far away to make it this far. Hospital services are free, but transportation is often unaffordable if they can get a ride. So how far away has this lady traveled to be here? It's about a four-hour drive away. Four-hour drive, mm -hmm. which for her would be in a bus ride maybe? She would come in a bus. Mm -hmm. With the bus, but yes. sometimes it's difficult for them if yes. they're if they're smelling. Uh, it is smelling. difficult, and sometimes the patients, the other passengers, say this woman's smelling. Put her off; she's got some disease, and they'll be thrown off the bus. Yeah. So the Hamlin Hospital created five satellite facilities across the rural countryside. They are funded entirely by donations from USAID, the Australian government, plus private, often church-based donors. Still, only a third of the 10,000 Ethiopian women who develop fistulas every year receive any care for them. That's why experts say it's important to shift the focus from repairing fistulas to preventing them, 
Ethiopia's Minister of Health, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, says a holistic approach is needed. The most important issue, it's the education part, which will be very important, and also law enforcement, like age of uh, marriage is very important. Girls education is very important, and we're working on that. His ministry has won praise from experts for building a network of rural health centers in recent years, with a major focus on maternal and child health. But there's still a huge shortage of skilled people to staff them, says Pamela Barnes, the head of Engender Health, who was in Ethiopia recently. We know how to prevent the level of birth or, or harmful injury to women in childbirth. So we're not waiting for new technology. We're waiting for the access to trained healthcare workers in facilities that can provide the care that women need. Anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior, and anterior lateral. A few years ago, the Hamlin Hospital began a four-year midwifery program. These freshmen were studying plastic models of the female pelvis, learning how to detect abnormalities in the fetus position. In the pelvis, it's this way. So which fontanelle should you feel? The midwife must be trained not only to be a birth attendant, look after the woman when she's delivering, but to be a diagnostician. She can tell from clinical signs that this baby will not come through this pelvis. So far, two dozen graduates have gone on to staff regional health centers in rural areas, and other training programs have also been launched to train midwives as well as community health workers. We just have to keep the next generation of doctors and nurses inspired to help these women until it's eradicated from the countryside. And it can be eradicated, and it will be eradicated. In England, obstetric fistulas no longer occurred after 1920. So it's not so very long ago that fistulas were occurring in England and in Europe. But Ethiopia, like so many developing countries, has a long way to go. Most Ethiopian women today still deliver their babies without the presence of a skilled birth attendant.